Hey you, yeah you, watching this video right now. Are you looking for videos that have cozy, cute, and creative vibes? Now on booktube, a frolic through fiction. An English gal entertaining people with her love for Greek mythology and other various literature works. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense, but it was very fun to film. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched the introduction that Sabine made for me. Oh my god, I love it. For context, Sabine and I were tweeting each other the other day and she said something about having Ashley vibes and I was like, I have a vibe. And she said it was cute, cozy and creative and I was like, wow, you've just made a catchphrase for me. And then she basically tweeted what sounded like an advertisement for my channel and I said, girl, I've been looking for a new intro this entire time. You could just film that for me and she did. So. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the masterpiece that was Sabine's face. I bet you were confused for a hot moment. <laughs> and now that you know what to expect on this channel of mine, let's get into the weekly reading vlog. <laughs> I didn't have coffee yesterday. And I knew that sip would go straight to my soul. <laughs> I just got a very exciting parcel. I know what's in here and I thought I'd unbox it because these are the candles I ordered from Grace and Honey, which if you didn't know is Becca from Becca in the Books' candle shop. Candle shop? Candle shop. <laughs> she makes body butters and things as well, but I swear by these candles, not just because they're Becca's, I do absolutely love them. And I thought I'd unbox them because I haven't had these ones before, I don't think, so this is exciting. <laughs> That, that, that's not how I meant to open it, but okay. I am destroying this box trying to get into it. <laughs> she labels all of the boxes with the names so that she know whose is whose and she's called me Smashers. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, there's already more in here that I ordered. Okay. So first of all we have this one which is I like big books and I cannot lie. It is yellow marbled effect and looks like this. Ooh! Oh my god. This smells like a very particular type of sweet and I don't know what. But this one is apparently orange limes, chocolate, patchouli and vanilla. I need to figure out what this smells like. I don't know what. It's almost like some sort of orange jelly sweet like the fizzy ones. Oh, I really like that. <laughs> I might as well just keep this up here. We also have, oh my god, look at the marble. This one is Go Away I'm Reading, which has one of my Instagram photos on it. So this is what it looks like. We have the grey and blue marbling all the way around. And this is the inside. Oh, that smells like lavender. Hey, it has lavender in it. I guessed a thing right. Wow. I say that as if lavender isn't the most distinct scent out there. <laughs> this has lavender, lilacs, warm woods and sugared vanilla. This is such a like spring scented candle. Oh my god, it literally does smell like you're walking through woodland that has lavender growing in it. I really like that. And then we also have the Treat Your Shelf candle, which is super pretty with the bookshelves and pink marbling. Look at that. Oof. Look at it! So cute! Ooh! That smells very different to anything I've smelled before. What is it? Raspberry candy, floss, licorice, strawberries and caramel. I can smell the candy floss in it. But there's also a kind of musky scent to it and I don't know what it would be. Maybe the licorice? Ooh! Oh, I'm a fan. And then there's also another one which I 
I'm fairly sure I didn't order, so Becca's just put this in at random, but this is the Wild and Improbable candle, inspired by Strange the Dream. Why is my lighting gone? Awful. Can, can I get some light, please? Okay, I'll have to do this to get the light properly, but... <laughs> This one is inspired by Strange the Dreamer and is blue with gold glitter inside it, which you can't see too well, but I'm sure it will be on the top, just like I predicted. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god, this reminds me of my teenage years. So apparently it smells like lemons, jasmine, mimosa and sandalwood. But this smells very distinctly like a perfume I used to wear when I was in my teenage years. Oh my god, this is just an absolute nostalgia kick. Ah, oh, I love them! I love them all! So the first three that I showed are a set and that is why I bought them. And then, as I said, this one is the Strange the Dreamer one. I will, of course, leave a link to Becca's candle shop down below where you can get these from. And as I said, she does do body butters as well, which are... Oh, they're good. So I've just gained four more candles. Not that I need it anymore. I have like an entire row of candles above my desk, but I do actually use and love them. So I'd rather just support a friend instead of buying random candles. Makes sense. I'm never going to sit in front of this window again. I swear to God, it's the bit of my life. I mean, <laughs> I think I do have another parcel coming today from Molly. She messaged me saying that she's ordered me something, but it's coming in two different batches and I'm like, why have you sent more than one thing? Ah! So apparently I have something arriving today and something arriving at the weekend. Apparently this haul is going to be unboxings, which is very exciting because I didn't expect anything. <laughs> I have the other parcel. It's literally about half an hour later and it arrived. <laughs> this is so exciting. This looks creepy, wow. So I'm going to guess this is from Molly because she did tell me that I was expecting something today and she got me The Phantom of the Opera, the book. <laughs> this is probably after my screaming the other day about having watched the musical for the first time and I know that Emma is a massive fan but I've never read it before. As I said, I didn't know the story before watching the musical at the weekend and every single time I hear Emma mention it I just want it and it's one of those books that I really do want to get around to. It's smaller than I thought it was which really surprised me. I thought it would be really chunky. I know that I won't read this one anytime soon just because uni has still killed off like any kind of motivation I have to read classics like this but it is definitely one that I'm very glad to add to my collection and we'll get to at some point in the future and oh. So the back of this one says, a mysterious phantom haunts the depths of the Paris Opera House where he has fallen passionately in love with the beautiful singer Christine Dyer. Under his guidance, her singing rises to new heights and she is triumphantly acclaimed. But Christine is also loved by Raoul de Chagny. That's a really bad pronunciation, I apologise. And by returning his love, she makes the fiend she knows as the angel of music mad with jealousy. When the phantom is finally unmasked, will Christine see beyond his hideous disfigurement? The twists and turns of Leroux's thrilling story has captivated readers since its very first appearance in 1910, and its outlines are known to many more who have seen it on stage or film. <laughs> This is so excited. And I love the Oxford World Classic Editions, even if this is creepy as anything. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Molly, for this. I love it very much. I'm just looking at my shelves like, where can this live? <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hi guys, so I'm looking a little bit ghostly right now with this lighting, but it is currently Tuesday evening and I have just finished filming. I say it's evening, it is at 20 past 10 at night. <laughs> I'm honestly getting a little bit fed up because I just don't really have anything to talk about. My life at the minute is just a cycle of doing uni work throughout the day and then making videos in the evening and for some reason both are just taking a really long time. So it's just a constant cycle of that. And honestly, I need to figure out what is going on, not what's going on, I just need to figure out where I can find time for myself because I'm not doing any reading. I said this last week so I'm not going to repeat myself any further but I currently need to just do a general tidy up of the room after filming, gathering my washing because it's still outside drying and then I am going to hopefully settle down and do some reading. I'm going to start Elantris I think even though I'm still like halfway through Earthsea. I just don't feel like reading that, I want to read something that I can 
really get into because I just feel like I've my reading's just been sort of crap lately so <laughs> hopefully that will be the case but tomorrow uh, hopefully that will be the case but I'll let you know tomorrow hi guys it is Wednesday evening and oh, I look a mess it's been an evening <laughs> what did I do today um I'm sorry if I seem really scattered my brain is just all over the place but today I actually did a FaceTime study session with Michelle from Books Michelle and it actually worked. <laughs> we did talk for a while because obviously we're going to, like if you're on a FaceTime with a friend you're going to end up talking a lot. And Michelle is just the absolute sweetest so it was nice at FaceTiming with her, seeing how she is. But we did aim to do a study session and we were both quite productive in that so I'm really glad that that went well because I know that I've got looming deadlines, I think Michelle has as well and <laughs> it's a fun time to be a student right now. But it did help even just in terms of having someone with you who you know because you can kind of just complain at each other about how much you don't want to do it and then you can do it. We did small sprints so we started off with 10 minutes, did 15 and then I think we ended up on 20 and between all of them we just stopped, had a little catch up break and you know I did a bit of talking and it was just nice to break it up a bit so instead of having just this one big slog of hours that you have to do work, you break that down into smaller studying sprints and then also get to see your friend as well because Michelle lives in the Netherlands and <laughs> I've never met her before so it's just nice to FaceTime and yeah be productive together and it worked so well that we're doing it again tomorrow so. So most of the day went really well and then it just kind of crashed and burned around the evening time because <laughs> I had one video that I was trying to get up and everything about that video went wrong like there were so many things that bothered me about that video that I kept having to change and then it was just about to go live and I realised there was a mistake in it and I couldn't edit it out in YouTube studio because that editor just wasn't working and I had like three minutes to decide what to do, ended up deleting the entire thing, redoing it, re-uploading it and it was <laughs> so stressful <laughs> even though this is literally just like a thing that I've done and could just put up on my own terms I just it stressed me out far too much. So I've had a bit of a <sighs> kind of evening like trying to distressed just by not really doing much of anything. It's now about 10 p.m. and I will give you a reading update in a second but I have a present. <laughs> I think I know what this is judging from the wrapping paper which is upside down for you guys <laughs> and I am aware that I'm having lots of unboxings or like bookish hauls in this vlog but I mean at least there's some kind of new content because I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> But I do think I know what this is, so I don't want to ruin the wrapping paper. I'm really impressed by the wrapping skills. <laughs> so this is Fat Lip by Hannah O'Donnell. Hannah is a fellow booktuber and somebody that I've enjoyed talking to recently and she wanted to send me her book. Now I will say right now that this is not my usual sort of thing and she knows this. We talked about this beforehand <laughs> because on the back this one says a love story collection, a memoir in parts, an anthology of relatable awkwardness, fat lip will make you laugh, cry and reach for your loved ones. So it's really not something that I would usually reach for but there's two things about this. The first one is that I would really like to have a small collection or large collection depending how many friends I end up making in life <laughs> but a collection of publications from people I know and people I'm friends with just so that I can support them and obviously try them out at some point and just kind of look at them and be like they did that. <laughs> so this is definitely going to go towards that collection and of course I will try it at some point because my second thing with this is that as much as this isn't my usual kind of thing I have read stuff that's outside of my comfort zone that I've absolutely loved and I also don't want to restrict myself to certain genres. I know at the minute I'm very closely tied to fantasy and I've been reading fantasy for a very long time, always will do, but every so often I want something different and I also just want to every so often reach out and expand my reading range because I don't just want to limit myself to one genre all the time. So things like this are also really helpful when I want to just take a little step away from fantasy once in a while. So thank you so so much Hannah for sending this one my way, it generally means a lot that you would even think to so yeah I'm really happy to have this, I have seen that there's a postcard inside with a note on so I'm gonna go and read that in a second after I tell you guys that I have started reading Elantris by Brandon Sanderson and I'm only 60 pages in but I think I'm really going to love this. This one I don't know too much about going into it, all I know is that the city of Elantris used to have people who could 
go through this kind of event in their life just at random and this event would make them divine. So people used to have magic however 10 years ago something happened which meant that this event just went wrong and now when people go through this transition they just end up dead but not dead as we know it. They're still walking and moving and animated but they're not okay. <laughs> That is all I can say of the plot 60 pages in but there are also some political and religious plot lines going on which is just this is why I think I'm going to love this one so much. One because from the first 60 pages I've already been pulled in like I just I cannot wait to get back to this book but also I love complicated world building and plot lines and I love it when there's all these different kinds of things going on and seeing how they all come together so the fact that we have so many different narratives is really really intriguing to me and I cannot wait to return to it which is why I'm going to go and do that right now. Oh and I should probably mention as well that I'm also buddy reading this with Beth from Books Nest. We just happened to want to read it around the same time so we thought we'd buddy read it and I'm really enjoying that so far already just because it's fun to kind of theorise things. I don't usually theorise as I read so it's quite a brain training exercise for me. <laughs> as silly as that sounds but yeah really excited to see what this one's like and it's so exciting thinking that I already love a book 60 pages in when I have this many pages to go because it's, it's gonna be good. I hope, I hope it's going to be good. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> I am also reading A Wizard of Earthsea. I haven't read anything since last week but I need to try and finish that this week because the live show is going to be happening soon and also I don't want to prioritise Elantris too much and just forget about the other book <laughs> which is definitely a thing that could happen like I might not even pick up Earthsea again until the weekend but we shall see we shall see. For now though my camera battery is dying and I want to go and read more of Elantris so I'm going to go and do just that. <laughs> Hi guys it is now Friday afternoon and I... it's been a weird day. <laughs> I started off the day pretty anxious but it's also been a successful day and not that much has happened at the same time so it's like those are three completely opposing things um seemingly but let's just say that I am very glad to have the prospect of a chilled evening because I handed in an essay this morning which means that I'm really really close to just being completely done with uni. I still need to do one more round of editing for my dissertation next week and I also need to write one more essay but after that I'm done. <laughs> but I didn't anticipate having this essay finished already so I handed it in and it means that I could have today and the weekend off. So that was really nice but my day did start off with quite a lot of anxiety because I have had multiple attempts of hacking happen across different accounts. So I've had one attempt on my Instagram, I've had a couple of attempts on my Google which is connected to most things including my YouTube and everything and then I woke up this morning with four attempts on Spotify, weirdly, and it just triggered my anxiety because even though none of them were successful, just the thought that somebody somewhere was trying to get in, even if it's just like, even if it wasn't specifically because of me, just the, this is my platform, you know? You guys are very inherently tied to this and I didn't want it to affect any of my content or affect you guys at all and it just made me really, really anxious because I was like, do not like this. <laughs> so as I said none of these attempts were successful thank god but I just spent the morning just shutting everything down, putting every single security measure in place that I possibly could and basically making my little online empire into an absolute fortress. <laughs> Hopefully it's fine now, I have gotten in contact with people from the actual companies and stuff to see if they could do anything and some measures have been put in place to make sure that they can't get past anything. So hopefully that's fine but it did just really like put me on edge knowing that many attempts had been made um, but yeah th hopefully we're okay. I feel like this whole lockdown situation is just bringing out the worst in some people on the internet because last night on the Myth Take Discord we also had a couple of trolls join at like 2am. Luckily I was awake but they basically just joined, was instantly really rude and then we're trying to wind people up by just initiating conversations that weren't going anywhere. As I said luckily I just happened to be awake that late at night so I kicked them out pretty swiftly. I don't have patience for that kind of thing. But yeah it's a weird place on the internet right now. Everything's a bit, I mean everything's a bit weird in the world anyway but <sighs> I've been so fed up lately. You could tell at the start of this vlog I am feeling better now. I like my anxiety is reduced from this morning. I don't feel as stressed. The face times with Michelle when we did study sessions really really helped. If anything it's been the video side of things. It's been stressing me out this week for some reason they're just not be working but 
everything's fine now. I'm going to stop complaining and what I'm going to do is open this because this will be the second half of what Molly sent me. So early in the week she sent me Phantom of the Opera and said that I still had something else to be expected. So I'm excited to see what. <laughs> So this note was meant to cover both of them but obviously because they were separated it didn't end up happening that way. But it says, the first is a thank you for everything you've done for me and for being such an incredible friend. The second is because I didn't get you anything when it was your birthday although I really wanted to. <laughs> Bless you! Let's see what this is. That's backwards. Um, I will... I recognise this! <laughs> So this is not my usual kind of read, but Molly knows I would have been reading it because this is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I think this is a middle grade, but it's a mystery kind of book and I was going to read this one because Molly is actually hosting a readathon in June called Detectathon. And the main premise of that is you're kind of trying to find a missing notebook and that's very much inspired by this book. So the back of this book says, when a tornado rips through town, 12 year old Ivy Aberdeen's house is destroyed and her family of six is displaced. Ivy feels invisible and ignored in the aftermath of the storm and what's worse her notebook filled with secret drawings of girls holding hands has gone missing. Mysteriously Ivy's drawings start to reappear in her locker with notes from someone telling her to open up about her identity. Ivy thinks and hopes that this someone might be her classmate, a girl on whom Ivy has begun to develop a crush. Will Ivy find the strength and courage to follow her feelings? So yes, this one sounds like an LGBTQ plus mystery of sorts, centering around a 12 year old girl, which I can honestly say I've never read anything like this before. I really can't predict whether I'm going to like this one or not, but this is the group book for Detectathon and the book that it's all based on, so I'm definitely going to give it a go and I know that during the Detectathon I'm going to be hosting a live show with Molly. So I'll leave a link to her announcement video and just her channel in general down in the description box if you want to go and check it out. Thank you so so much for getting me this and Phantom of the Opera. You didn't have to do anything but it's very much appreciated. <laughs> so yes, I don't think I have any other updates for now. I have done a little bit more reading, but I'm going to wait until possibly later this evening to give you an update on that, just because I want to get a little bit further and have some more thoughts, because it's still very much in the like world and plot building process. So yes, I'll catch in with you later. <laughs> if I hadn't changed outfit, you'd just think this was the exact same day as the one before. <laughs> but it's actually now Saturday, and this vlog is just one big like chaotic mess of zero reading updates so far but I am going to give you one in a second and book hauls apparently which is going to continue. <laughs> if I knew I was going to get this much book mail this week I would have just tried to wait until the end of the week and given you one big unboxing but I didn't so enjoy the chaotic mess that is my life. I think I know what these are though. Um, I'm pretty sure these are from Claire and I am just going to open it to confirm. Oh she wrapped them so nicely! <laughs> oh. So as you can see, you can probably, yeah you can see what these are. Claire sent me copies of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares because in my video which was the Book to Net All Stars charity challenge, I'll leave a link to it down below if you haven't seen it, but I say in that video that I wanted to get the paperback editions of this duology because I read Strange the Dreamer a while ago but I gave away my copy because it was a collector's thing and there's a story there anyway but I wanted to get these so that I could actually reread Strange the Dreamer and continue on with Muse of Nightmares and then Claire messaged me saying that she actually owned these but they're not really her thing so she would be happy to send them my way and so she did and she just wrapped them it's so cute I can see that there's also a little something inside this so I'm gonna I'm gonna see what these are oh my goodness these are so cool! So she also put in these bookmarks I guess but they're in a kind of film because I don't know if the sun's gonna out glare it but they're like papyrus I think? She did message saying they're genuine so I presume that they are actually papyrus and they have Egyptian hieroglyphs on it. How cool is that? And it's apparently from the Egyptian heritage collection. So we have that one and then this one too. Oh my god, they're so cool. I presume that Claire remembered, um, I think in a vlog like last month or something. She must have remembered me saying that I want to learn more about ancient Egypt and its mythology and things because th this is just, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm holding them so delicately because I can tell that they're really like 
not breakable, but I just don't want to damage them in any way. You can actually take them out of the case, but like I said, I don't want to damage it, so I'm like... This is so cool, I love them. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, of course, for sending me the books my way. Oh, I'm really looking forward to getting back into these. I'm in such a mood for Lady Taylor at the minute. I don't know if I'll be able to reread this one anytime soon. I'm trying to think because I have like book clubs and read-alongs and things that I'm having to join. Um, but either way, I'm very glad to have this one back in my collection and then the sequel to follow up because we know how bad I am at continuing series, but if it's only two, I'm sure I can manage. <laughs> it's funny because I will have a book haul coming soon and you'll have seen half of it just in this one vlog. <laughs> but I have been buying ebooks and stuff as well. Um, I did do a poll to see if you guys were interested in the ebooks being included in a book haul because I just keep forgetting that they're actually real books because they're on my phone and I can't physically see them so I just forget that they're there. But I did do a poll to see if you guys wanted to hear what ebooks I've been buying lately and that was very overwhelmingly a yes. <laughs> I think almost a thousand people voted on that poll and I think 90 something percent of it was a yes so I'm like okay hint taken. So that will be coming soon but yes back to today. I am going to read some more of Elantris but reading update I'm now 200 pages into this and I'm enjoying this so so much. <laughs> so we follow I think it's three different perspectives and I'm surprised because usually when that happens there's at least one where you just don't really enjoy it as much as the other ones and it's just a bit like no. Nah. But that's just not happening. I love all of the perspectives in this and I find it really interesting seeing how their stories might possibly link up. We've had two of them start to link up slightly and the other one just isn't yet but I can see how it might do in the future and I just... Ugh! It's so good already! This is exactly the sort of fantasy I love where it's just complicated and there's lots of different storylines going on and we've got both political and religious ties, we've got the fantastical ties to it and I'm just... I love it so so much. I will say that it is a little bit to get your head around because there's a lot of names. It doesn't really... it doesn't go too easy on you. It's not really going to hold your hand while you're crossing the road type situation when it comes to the world building. But at the same time it's not really bothering me and you do pick it up as you go. I am listening along with the audiobook for this one which is helpful when it comes to pronunciations because everything's completely different to how I would read it. <laughs> There's a lot of vowels in all the names and I just know I would have said them all wrong. But I just love the characters, which I didn't expect because I think when it comes to higher fantasy I don't typically focus on the characters as much. I love them all in here, especially Serene. Serene is just so fierce and badass, but in like a... not in a way where she's either badass or feminine, like she is both. And her fierceness comes largely out of intelligence and I love stuff like that so so much. It's really interesting as well following these specific perspectives because they're set in three different areas of sorts or come from three different areas I think will be the better way to word it. And it just seemed a really good choice of characters to write perspectives from because the way that each of them are approaching the story and the beliefs that they brought with them and the society that they bring with them is just... it makes for such a good dynamic and really builds the world even more because we have so many different types of opinions and beliefs and things coming into this and I just... Uh, it's so well done. <laughs> so I'm going to go and read maybe one or two chapters of this but I also need to make a lot of graphics for the readathon that is coming up for Mythtig. That's happening in June and I need to make the graphics and also just like get all the information down because on Monday I think I'll be filming the full announcement video which is and it's come around so quick. So I've got quite a few things to do but also it's all stuff that I will enjoy so I'm quite looking forward to this weekend. <laughs> Let me be 
Hey guys, look how dumb I am. <laughs> this it doesn't actually look as bad on camera as it does in real life, but so I have this kind of like skincare handheld machine thing that the best way I can describe what it does is it's basically like a vacuum and you can use it like on your face to suck out all the crap from your pores and it's really disgusting but really satisfying. And I haven't used it in a while but my face just felt disgusting because won't even lie, like my self-care this week is just <laughs> being non-existent. So I just thought today I'm gonna have like a full-on pamper session and like really give my skin a little bit of help but um the thing is because it's a vacuum if you leave it on any part of the skin for too long this happens and because I've not used it in a while I wasn't used to how long I should leave it on for because it says five seconds but it definitely needs to be less than five seconds because this happens so I <laughs> so I just look like I smacked my face on the corner or something <laughs> I need this to go down because I'm meant to be filming the readathon announcement on Monday so I'm like I hope this just somehow vanishes really quickly otherwise your girl's gonna be wearing a lot of makeup <laughs> but yeah I just thought I would document my stupidity because it's likely this will still be here tomorrow um, when I finish the vlog so <laughs> just to avoid any alarm I thought I'd confront it it doesn't hurt like at all it's not an injury it's just quite obvious marks on my face. <laughs> wow, this is an ultimate Ashley looking like a hot mess while getting carried away doing things type look. <laughs> but I can't be bothered to make myself look presentable for the sake of a vlog update because I have spent the last six or seven hours working on myth date graphics because if you didn't know we are hosting a readathon the announcement should be up on wednesday so keep an eye out for that but that meant i had to make all of the basic graphics by tomorrow and make a big document basically listing off everything that i need to mention in the video so that i don't forget anything and the way that the readathon works you'll see when the video does go up there's a lot of prompts and there's some kind of i don't know what to say without giving it away the way that some of the prompts work take some explaining so I've had to really make sure that that's clear and also try to make it clear in a graphic format so there's lots of colour coding there's an element of storytelling behind it and yeah it was just a lot to figure out <laughs> I know that Charlotte today has been working on some of the technical side of things so she's been setting up the discord and making a google doc for all of the graphics and everything to be shared into so that we can share it during the video announcement and yeah it's um it's proven to be a lot to organize and we're definitely nowhere near done I need to make so many more graphics but they're the sort of thing that can wait until May when I'm done with uni because the graphics that I needed now are the basic ones everything else is just kind of extra content that will be happening during the readathon so that can all be put on hold for now um it just it takes so long <laughs> And I'm still not done making graphics for today because I actually need to make the graphic for the Laguna Long live show which is happening next week. I might as well tell you now that that's happening on Saturday. At 8pm on my channel I'm joined by my lovely crew of UK folks so that is Becca, Gavin, Cody and Jade. So if you have read A Wizard of Earthsea then feel free to join us. Even if you haven't there will be a spoiler free section at the beginning and then we'll give you plenty of warning to escape before there's any spoilers. And actually while we're on that subject... <laughs> I left my book across the room. I did actually finish reading A Wizard of Earthsea this morning which is a bloody good job because I'm not going to get any other reading done today. <laughs> it's kind of funny actually because I have said all along that this is a very slow read. It took me a week to read 100 pages, yada yada. I read 60 pages today so I don't know what the difference was. I don't feel like it picked up at all. I just feel like today I actually focused on reading because I definitely wanted to get this finished today. I knew I wouldn't get Elantris finished today but I wanted to actually finish a book this week. So I made sure to focus on this, forced myself to sit down and read it and I did enjoy it in the end. I didn't absolutely love it because I didn't feel that pull to pick it up again and I was very easily distracted away from it. I would have rather read Elantris instead of this but I still enjoyed this one to some extent. I did really like the plot, I thought it was quite interesting. I did feel like it wrapped up really quickly, like I almost missed the part of it happening I read it and then I was like hang on rewind <laughs> and had to go back and read it again because it was just so quick that I was like oh okay oh my god there was one part though which just meant that this book vastly improved for me and that was a tiny dragon in this there's a girl called Yarrow and she's introduced as having a tiny dragon wrapped around her wrist like a bracelet I want a tiny dragon <laughs> 
as for the writing style everything I said in last week's vlog very much still stands where it's just a lot of description. I did like it because it felt like a classic fantasy in the way that it's very rich. It does kind of info dump. It just lists off a lot of names and a lot of description about every single island that this man sets foot on which is completely not necessary at all. <laughs> Which then felt really odd because there were certain details that would just be announced really suddenly in the space of a sentence where I would kind of sit and think, hang on a second, I feel like this needs more explanation. So for instance, without giving any context because of spoilers, there's this one instance where it was just stated really suddenly that the earth contains everything that's evil and I was like, why? <laughs> it was almost stated as if it was just a known fact, which I don't mind, but compared to the very overly descriptive way that everything else is described I was like this seems really contradictory. <laughs> As for the characters there wasn't a huge cast of them actually. We had the main character Ged who is very arrogant to start with, is kind of dumb and if I knew him in person I would probably dislike him. <laughs> he was very much one of those characters where every single decision he made you just wanted to facepalm yourself because it was like why did you do that? You do see character development in him and I did like his relationships over a lot of things, specifically his relationship with Vetch. Vetch was his friend and is also a wizard and as far as I can tell from the discord and everything is by far everybody's favourite character. My favourite character is Yarrow just because she has a tiny dragon. <laughs> in relation to that though there's very few female characters. I think there's literally three and I don't know if that changes throughout but it was really bizarre to me. <laughs> One thing to note in this book however though is that the majority of the cast have a dark skin tone which is definitely not the standard for classic fantasy and typically used to be one of those things a few years ago that people mentioned because it surprised them. I did know that going into this book but I just thought I'd mention it in case anybody was interested. So yes this one was a bit of a weird one because I both enjoyed it and didn't. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to the live show though, like of course I would say that because I'm hosting it but this one in particular seems to have a lot of discussion around it despite only being a hundred and something pages long which I didn't expect, I was actually worried about hosting live shows for these because with them being so short I wasn't sure that we'd have enough to talk about but the very varied opinions about various different things within this book, different elements and characters and opinions and things is just going to make the live show really interesting. So if you can definitely make sure you can tune into that and yeah I'll talk about it more then. <laughs> for now though I am going to end this vlog here because I do need to make the graphic for that live show and also edit this vlog so I imagine I'm going to be up pretty late tonight. <laughs> it's already 9 p.m so uh it's gonna be a late one. I'm really hoping that at the start of next week I can finish Elantris and also read Theogony because I need to finish those two to complete my Owl's TBR so. I do however also need to plan my final essay for university and make some quite intense videos such as my wrap up and the readathon announcement and a book haul. <laughs> Lots of videos that are really quite long. It's going to be an intense week next week, that cannot be denied, but we'll see how it goes or at least you will see in my vlog next week. <laughs> But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.